welcome to my YouTube channel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do up, and I say do up, not restore, do up a sailing boat, right? We're not going to restore it, we're not going to turn it back to its fantastic former glory. We're going to get this boat here, we're going to do it quite economically with some everyday materials, everyday tools that the normal DIY chap will have in his garage. And we're going to do this boat up so that me and my lad, who's filming this, can actually go sailing in it fairly soon, okay? It's not a full restoration, it's a do-up. And the important thing with any boat like this, if you're gonna do it up, is to make sure you've got everything. Now, I know this boat doesn't look pretty at the moment, but I do know that I've got everything that goes with it. I've got the masts, the sails, all the little hooks, cleats, ropes, and everything, okay? And that's an important thing. The whole thing costs 400 pounds off eBay. Right, and we're gonna get it in the water in the next five, six, seven weeks, something like that. Going to get sailing it and the important thing is to get sailing it get it in the water right so what we've got is a lysander 19. oh what i mean to say as well is that as we go along i'm going to explain all these terms to you in simple terms so i'll tell you something like a sailing term or part of the boat but i'm actually going to tell you what it is right okay so it's lysander 19. lysander is the name of the boat it's like saying, you know, it's a, a Ford C-Max or a Citroen Zara. It's a Lysander, that's the name of the boat. It's built by Percy Blanford, probably built in the 70s, maybe the 80s. It's made out of plywood, and the pieces of plywood are fastened together on a frame, and you'll be able to see in places along here if you look really closely where the screws are. Lysander 19, 19 foot long. Right, so let's have a look over at them. So what we've got, let's have a look underneath here first, eh? Right, so you can see if we look underneath, we've actually got two keels here. One keel there and one keel there. And that's why it's called a bilge keel, a bilge keel or a twin keel boat. Okay, you can see underneath there, it's reasonable. The paint's not too bad here and these two are metal. This is all plywood. Okay, straight through to the hull, and you can see it's got a special trailer with the two little runners on here, and these slopes here, as you take it in and out of the water, they guide it onto the trailer, and there's a little roller there as well for the other end to roll up, okay? So, twin keel boat, not too bad underneath, and what we're going to do eventually is we're going to rub this down, brush it like that, and we're going to get some paint on it. Right, let's have a look at the top side. Okay, so it comes up the side here along the side there and if you look close up here what we've got is it's fairly flaky and if I just use this wire brush here you can see you know the paint comes off quite easily and what happened last autumn is I unfortunately broke my collarbone and before I could get to do anything with this and what I did manage to do is I managed to get a little bit of undercoat and primer on it with, uh, to protect it over winter and that's roughly protecting the paint but what you will see with this is that there's no way we can get this back to a mirror-like finish, right? It's not gonna happen because it's gonna to take too long. So we're gonna get it back to a decent sound finish and then we're gonna get some paint on it. Right, so let's look out around the outside. The three windows there. And if you come around this way, we can have a look. See, it's not in bad condition. There's no soft spots on here. And if you were buying a boat, you'd wanna have a good tap around it like that. To make sure it's not sounding hollow anywhere and again you could push it like that what you're looking for is no soft spots that your thumb sinks into and i've already done that with this you can see we come down this side here this is the side that was away from the sun so you can see this side here is actually that's a little bit better quality that is okay round to the back or the stern the back the stern okay How the trailer sits on this side of the uh, trailer here. This bit here is called the skeg, okay, and the skeg sits on the trailer there and really it should be sitting tight on this board here. That wedge was on it originally but it's, that wedge is doing absolutely nothing for it now, it's not helping matters at all. Okay, I've got a mast on the top here and the mast is on a bit of a support and what we're going to do is we're going to take that mast off in a few minutes so it's just the bare boat. Let's go and have a look inside. Okay, well welcome aboard then. 
Okay, so you can see we've got a little cockpit area here. And what we've got is we've got a few little um, cabinets here for storage underneath. And then down inside here, we've got, effectively you can see again, it's not pretty in here, but, right, it's going to get better. That water's built up over um, winter where it's got underneath the cover and in there you can see the frames where the boat's all built but where all these frames are down both sides here and in the floor down the sides in the garage there we've got all the bits to go on them side bits both sides and we've got all the floorboards that go down there and we've tucked them inside to keep them dry and so that we can paint them we're going to pump this bilge out here and the bilge in the boat Right, the bilge is like the lowest part of the boat. So you can see the bottom bit there's the bilge. All the water gathers in that. And that pipe that's pointing in there, well actually goes to a pump at the back here. And we can suck the bilge out. And in a minute we're going to get all the water out. And when the water's out, it'll start to dry out in here. And we've got a better cover to put on it now. And no more water will build up in here as it rains because we've got a decent cover to put on it. The only water that will get in here is as we're sailing if any comes over the side. So eventually it's a four berth because you can sleep two people down there, two down there. And then where it steps down a little bit, behind here, the other two people's legs can go each side. Now it would be a bit cramped. Me and my lad are just going to sleep either side of there. And all that front bit's going to be covered up. These two sides here we're going to use for a little bit of storage on each side and if we were going to keep it a few years we would probably think about removing this all together and so that we could put shelves and that in okay and if we stand up now <coughs> we can see from the sailing position here if we look across the boat up to the bow the bow is the pointy end the stern's the blunt end and we can see it's got a bit of mold on it over winter but you know it, it, it's going to be good when we finished it and if we come down here you can see what I mean about some of the quality of the wood and um, you can see there's some gouges out of the wood here in various places and it's gone a little bit moldy in that and you can see some of the joints there that were taped over and we're going to paint this in the same way that a you know years and years of coats of paint on it and that but not necessarily mirror like and smooth okay and the very first thing me and my lad are going to do now is we're going to take this mast off and we're going to take this little um, assembly off on the back here that holds the mast up and what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to fit a bilge pump so what with our problem here is is that if we look in the bilge here at the bottom of the boat you can see we've got a lot of water and what we've done just threaded a pipe down there we've already got some fittings see this pipe here that pipe there goes underneath it goes underneath this cabinet where I'm sitting here underneath this cupboard along here under this one and it comes out here now part of that was fitted already but if you're doing it for the first time what you need to do is get a pipe from the lowest part of there up somewhere around here or anywhere you want to fit your bilge pump this is your bilge pump and effectively they're about 20 pounds to buy i managed to get one from uh, off ebay for 12 pound 95 but it took three and a half weeks to come from china so if you're in a hurry just make sure you have a look where it's coming from and what happens is this handle here sucks back and two and there's little valves inside here and on the other side inside there and effectively the little valves make it suck one way and blow out the other way and you can see we've already got some screws fitted here for this particular bilge pump and it's going to fit in there like that now people do fit bilge pumps in all sorts of places this one actually fits here and you can see we're just going to push that onto there i've just pushed the end into the pipe there and the other end I'm going to push into this pipe here okay and then the screws already there and we could mount this pump if we want straight onto them screws there now I'm not going to do that at the moment so we've got this end coming out of there underneath this seat up to the pump here and then the other end of the pump goes just underneath this seat and it comes out here through a little hole here and what you do need to remember is that if you're fitting one of these and you're drilling a hole into the hole for a bilge pump actually 
fit it above the water line because what you don't want to do is to fill your boat up with water. Okay. Lots of people fit these in different places. You can fit them wherever you want. I quite like them on a sailing boat here. And I'll tell you why, because it just reminds you every now and again to pump the bilge. And if you suddenly took a load of water over the side of this, you know, you're near capsized or there's a lot of spray, you're actually right by the bilge pump here. There are electronic versions available. I could fit an electric one there and what they are they're a little bulb like that and they've got a float in it and when the float goes up with the water it switches it on the problem with that is is that if you've got no power in your battery it's not going to pump regardless of how much water you've got so I quite like the hand ones you can use them whenever some people fit them underneath their cupboards like this you know, if you didn't want that pump showing you might fit it under here and you could just pump away like that or something like that I like it there because it's I'm going to show you what happens now. I'm going to give this a few pumps. And what should happen is, my lad will have a look over the side, you'll see it start to come out. Okay, and if you have a look, this is about the speed you want to be going. Okay, and you can see it there. I'm probably down in the boat there as well. You can probably, can you see it all coming out mate? Yeah, a bit. Okay, right well what we might do is we'll see how long this takes but we'll keep videoing it and we may zoom this forward quite quickly. Right, well that took about seven or eight minutes that did. And if we have a look now down there, you can see there's just the tiniest little bit of a puddle left. And what will happen is that overnight that will dry or by tomorrow. A little bit of sunshine on that and that's soon dry. But what you can do, you know, it doesn't matter for us because we've got to wash this boat and everything, yeah. But what you can do is you can just use this. When the bilge is all nice and clean, you haven't got bits of flaky paint in there. You can just use a sponge to get that bit out. And now we can see, if we look down the hole here, you can see all the water's gone out of there. And in the seats underneath here, all the water's gone. So effectively, we haven't quite got a dry bilge, but we've near enough got a dry bilge. 